see Reggie's not here with us tonight. He's with his mum in Montana. I'm happy to tell you she's getting better every day. He sent me a great photo. She's up. Two thumbs. We send our wishes. Um, but that's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. When Reggie's away, you think, bang, we've got to get a Spice Girl. <laughs> just, to, just, to, just to even it out, you know? Which Spice Girl do you most identify with? Oh, man. You, you remember the movie Spice World? I do. You Very know how, well. You know how the, they had the tour bus? And the, the tour bus driver was Meatloaf? Yes. <laughs> Meatloaf. <laughs> That's who you identify with. That's your answer to the question is, which Spice Girl do you identify with? And your answer is meatloaf. Meatloaf. <laughs> wow. Better with spices. For sure. Yeah. For sure. What about you, Nate? Which Spice Girl are you? Which Spice Girl are you, do you think? I want to say Ginger, but let's be honest, it's Baby. It is. <laughs> I, I see no shame in that. I don't at all. I think you are. I think that's absolutely right. You're pure Baby Spice. Yeah, yeah, I am. Although, I, although you're looking great today, Nate. This uh, whole look, I love it. I've been dabbling a little bit. It just felt like this place hasn't quite been horny enough lately, so. <laughs> are you still doing hornytees.com? Dot biz, actually. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, are you, what is it, what's it called? Uh, hornytees.biz, home of the horniest t-shirts on the net. Um, it's, it's live right now. You can go there anytime. It's still up. St of course it's still up. But this is why I felt like we haven't spoken about this in a couple of years now. Yeah, you know, it's really popping off. I'm selling two, three t-shirts a year, so. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shake your head, Nick. Do not, do not make this some kind of branding issue. The guy's got a business. It's hornytees.biz. <laughs> like... I think it's okay. I think it's okay to talk about a business that's sold six T-shirts in the last four and a half years. <laughs> but you describe to us what it is, Nate. Okay. Um, it takes uh, popular slogans and puts them on T-shirts, but it, repl it arbitrarily replaces a word with the word horny. So, like, um, there's uh, I see dead people that from the classic movie The Sixth Sense, but it says I see horny people. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's a, there's a coffee mug, you know, normally, you know, don't, <laughs> don't talk to me, don't talk to me till I've had my coffee, but this says don't talk to me till I'm horny, <laughs> uh, you know, and dozens, dozens more options. Yeah. Well, that took quite the turn from Baby Spice, didn't it? <laughs> horny Spice. <laughs> All right, well, if you want to be informed, <laughs> yeah, you get it. Time to spice up your life. Because two are about to become one. <laughs> Went too far. <laughs> well, if you want to be informed and sp spice up your life, <laughs> it's time to zig a zig the news. Okay. No, that's no. No, no! 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 Oh, you said news. So I, I just... Pavlov's dog for me. Sorry. How many times? I, I... It's clearly... Your lead-in is going to be... It's time for Zig -a Zig the news, OK? And I want it to have a Spice Girls theme. OK? Oh, so. for freaking sake. For freaking sake, is your mum watching? Is that what just happened? Yes, she is. She's, she is watching. Oh, darn tootin'. <laughs> and I'll tell you what you all want to be, and we're trying to spice up your life and say you'll be there, because it's time for Zig -a Zig the news. <laughs> Now, does everybody... You remember that vaccine mandate for employers that President Biden announced last month? Well, business groups are now lobbying the White House to delay the mandate until after the holidays, saying that the mandate could make labour shortages even worse heading into the holiday shopping season. Sure, the holidays. You know, the time of year when people crowd into small rooms with their grandparents, yeah. <laughs> no need for a vaccine mandate until after that. <laughs> You know, why not, while we're at it, let's not require seatbelts in race cars until after the Daytona 500. <laughs> the business groups say the mandate could make things more difficult heading into the crucial holiday shopping season. So instead of emphasising the importance of public health, we're going with Pelotons. <laughs> 
And did everybody see this? Experts are saying that this year's Thanksgiving meal will be the most expensive meal in the history of the holiday. Every ingredient from the turkey to the after-dinner coffee is expected to cost more than ever. This is perfect. You know what I love more than dry turkey? Expensive dry turkey. <laughs> the most expensive Thanksgiving meal ever. You've got to look on the bright side on this one. You know, at least you finally have something to make small talk about with your family. Like, what? Oh. <laughs> What about the price of these yams? Crazy, huh? <laughs> Experts say the price increase is due to a combination of reasons, supply chain issues, labour shortages, and, of course, your niece demanding the turkey be free-range, organic and college-educated. <laughs> I still don't think I'm fully on... I understand... Um, th cos Thanksgiving, the dinner... I, get, I understand the sort of roast dinner element. But there are all manner of side dishes which, to me, just blow my mind. I don't understand it. Yeah. Can you talk me through it? Like, when did marshmallows make their way into a roast dinner? <laughs> that's... I, that's what I cannot ever get my head around. The... Ever, 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 ever. I just... We were coming out of the Depression and things were crazy in this country. <laughs> no, I, I get it. I think but that's to, what it was. But to stick with it, it's like, if we, were, if we went out for dinner, and we just ordered, or you ordered like a steak and fries, and I order a bowl of pasta. I'm like, oh, hang on, don't you get this popping candy and just get that on the top of there? Do you know what I mean? Let me just chuck a couple of gummy bears in here. It would make you, there would be, you'd be like, you'd look at me and rightly so think I'm insane. If you put candy on food in front of me and it was just the okay, two I of us. Okay, I picked the wrong person. You're <laughs> absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I, I thought it as I said it. I thought it as I said it. I, I, I went to the wrong person. I just don't, I, I, I'll never get it. I'll never understand it. The marshmallow thing's weird, but luckily nobody in the UK does anything weird with their food, so you're good. <laughs> like what? What do we do that's weird? What do we do that's weird? They just like a lot of this puddings that are just made out of blood. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> where it's just like, here's a weird reason to eat blood, or like, it's a pie, but it's got fish no, in but it. I'm, oh. that's French. Ah, it's French. Boudin noir. Yeah, but you guys eat blood pudding. What? Blood... Stargazy pie, blood pudding. What's stargazy pie? Yeah, you see, you're just mentioning kind of medieval dishes. Yeah. <laughs> Which, just so you know, I'm with you. I'm like, yeah, that's weird. You guys For see... you, that's the problem with America. You can't admit it when you're wrong. That's yeah. the problem. I happen to be of the opinion that we should scrap the whole meal and have a lasagna. So if we're gonna just start from scratch, why not start from scratch? So would that be your choice? You'd go lasagna. I think I'd go lasagna. You'd go like, lasagna. Like a nice family-style Italian dinner. I don't see, but why not? Yeah, bang a few marshmallows on the top of that, and you're good to go. <laughs> Moving on, earlier today, executives from TikTok and Snapchat made appearances for the first time ever on Capitol Hill. They testified in front of a Senate panel about the effects of their products on young users. It's a little tricky. The Snapchat executives only made an appearance for 10 seconds at a time. <laughs> Got to be a relief for Snapchat, all this, though. They must be like, Snapchat must be like, yes, we're still getting in trouble with Congress. We ain't dead yet, baby! <laughs> and we wanted to tell you about this. A hiker in Colorado who was lost on a mountain for 24 hours repeatedly ignored calls from rescuers because the calls were coming from an unknown number. <laughs> <laughs> They're fine now. <laughs> I understand. Actually, I understand everything this person did except for the initial desire to go hiking. <laughs> I do get it, though. What would you rather endure, being lost, cold and hungry out in the wilderness or having a robot try to sell you on a reverse mortgage? <laughs> Is anyone else just getting more and more calls every day from, like, Redondo Beach? <laughs> Is anyone else getting this redondo... And I can't... You can't block it. I've blocked the thing and they keep calling. To be fair, your car's limited warranty may have run out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... The rescuers called the hiker, but were like, nah, I'm not going to leave a voicemail. That'd be weird. <laughs> How do you get lost for 24 hours when you have a working phone. <laughs> and we wanted to show you this. This week, Hershey's is giving away a giant 
Kit Kat Halloween costume for four people <laughs> that even breaks apart just like the candy bar. <laughs> how does it go again? Yeah, but how does it go? How does the song go? No, I'm asking Tim. I'm asking Tim. How does it go, Tim? Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Okay. Break me off a piece of that sad costume. <laughs> The costume isn't for sale. You can't buy this. You have to win it by entering a contest. Kit Kat is going to choose one lucky winner, and then seven billion even luckier people don't have to wear that costume. <laughs> Breaks apart, just like the candy, which is convenient, because if you make your significant other get in that costume, you're definitely breaking up. <laughs> And this caught our eye, a $350 million wellness theme park will soon be coming to New York City. Here's a mock-up of what it's going to look like. It will include fitness centres, communal bathing, indoor water slides and even a massive pool with a swim-up bar. You know, wellness. <laughs> a wellness theme park. I think we may have actually finally found a theme park that Lauren would happily attend. <laughs> Would you go to that? Would you go to a wellness theme park? No, thank you. I don't even know what water slides have to do with wellness. Like, whoever has been like, oh, God, this is such a stressful work, work week. i got to get on a water slide tonight or I'm going to snap or something. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> if you need me, I'll be on the lazy river. <laughs> And finally, did everybody hear about this? Jeff Bezos' rocket company, Blue Origin, has announced that it's building a space station. It's true, the space station will be put into low Earth orbit and is going to be called Orbital Reef. Yeah, Orbital Reef. That sounds like a strain of weed that would blow your frickin' <laughs> brains out. Yeah? Right. Dude, go easy, dude. That's Orbital Reef, man. That is... <laughs> This is true. The station hopes to offer logistical su support, space habitation and equipment accommodation for businesses. I mean, I imagine these are businesses that offer space-related services. Although it would be cool if just randomly it had a sunglass hut. <laughs> There's a load of sunglasses floating around. You can, you, can, you can sort of ease your head into one and look in the mirror, see what it looks like. Just astronauts floating by like, how does that place stay open? No one's ever in there. <laughs> <laughs> we can actually, uh, we can show Jeff Bezos' actual rocket ship. Right, there you go, look at that. <laughs> if that's the Blue Origin rocket, I can only imagine what the docking station looks like. <laughs> and in a way, that's the news. We'll be right back with more of The Late Late Show, everybody. <laughs>